I think somebody was taking a picture of him when the cornice, and it was a large one. It, it gave way, and he disappeared over the edge. A 1,500-foot fall into the mouth of an active volcano. It was pretty much snow-free, lots of boulders, lots of rocks. And the hiker was no longer dressed for the cold. By the time you climb to the top of the mountain, you get pretty warm, so I understood they you know, took off some of their jackets and stuff to cool down. A 911 call from the rim sparked a massive search effort. And within an hour, a helicopter pilot could see the 52-year-old man on a snowbank and got within 50 feet. The sheriff's department says the pilot thought he could see his head moving and that a fellow climber thought he heard a rescue whistle blowing. Another helicopter crew went in later and saw no movement. There were attempts to reach the man from above and below. Rescue crews were able to put a medic on the crater floor. The plan? Climb up to the hiker. But it was getting dark, and the conditions were getting worse. It began raining. It was way too windy, and the rocks were falling near the hiker. So they got their guy out of there. There was nothing left crews could do for the hiker for now. Going to have to let the snow settle down because the avalanche danger is pretty bad. It's a nasty place to try and go. Um, it's a, you know, if we have to do it, uh, we'll do it. Thousands of people climb to the crater's rim every year, although a warning on the U.S. Forest Service website says it is, quote, unstable and can be hazardous at any time. Kieran Chetri, CNN, New York. To have a, a pave hawk in there from the Coast Guard yesterday and that not being able to conduct a hoist operation tells you how bad things were in the crater yesterday. And the smaller ship that was in there, uh, he's, he flies USGS contract, he knows the inside of that mountain, and uh, it was probably as bad as it, it can get in there. So, uh, you know, they're going to do everything they can to try and locate him, get him out of there this morning, but at the same time, safety first to the crew and, and the ship. Even at that point, once they get into the crater floor, uh, again, it's reported that he's on anywhere from a 45 to a 70 degree slope. Uh, we, we, we don't, we're just not in a position right now to safely get to him. There is some indication that they were preparing for a photo photograph on the crater rim. Um, everything else at that point is reported that the, the snow gave way, the cornice overhang gave way as he was standing there and he, he essentially fell the distance that he did. No one saw him after he went over the crater rim, didn't see where he landed. Uh, they did throw his pack over in the general direction of where uh, he went, but when we flew in there yesterday afternoon, the pack was uh, also observed, but probably a thousand feet to a little bit more away from where he was. I can tell you that uh, based on what they observed from the helicopter yesterday, the uh, canyon wall is not snow covered where he fell. It's jagged rock. It protrudes out all the way down to where he was located uh, from the air yesterday. And of course, the angle, um, I'm just trying to guess on, you know, you, you're looking at a, probably a slope about like that, you know, between 45 and, and 90. So um, it's steep, very, very steep and, uh, and very un unstable, unstable rock. We, we're going to hold out hope until we get somebody on on location that can get him into a helicopter and, 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 and move him. And at this point, you know, we'll continue to operate with the idea in mind that he's alive. We'll hope for the best. Um, you know, history would tell you that uh, things like this typically will not turn out well, but until we have somebody with him and, and him out of there to confirm that, we, we won't know. And we'll just continue to hope that for a positive outcome. Yeah, they had a Coast Guard Jayhawk in there yesterday, and uh, and a Pave Hawk, and and they and the and this, these are monster machines. These are gigantic aircraft. They can take and, and they will pull anything out from anywhere. But the winds were just too strong yesterday, and the pilots could not keep the the helicopter hovering long enough. Let me show you here. We'll just go through one thing at a time. We'll go through cornice. We'll go through overhang right. because it's really easy to see here. This would be where the rock would be ending right. and this would be the snow on top of that rock okay. so it's been snowing hundreds of inches on top of this mountain the the guys and this is a stock photo from the USGS this right. is a couple of years ago but still you get the idea there's the snow that's overhanging they were on top of a ledge like that when that ledge of snow right. let go and they went all the way down the one guy went all the way down here into the canyon itself here's Mount St. Helens and I'm gonna let this play 
I'm going to let this play while I go get a brand new live shot of the webcam right now that is live on Mount St. Helens that literally just took a new picture, right. and I'm going to put it on the air right there. So here's what Mount St. Helens looks like. The crater across one mile, from ridge to ridge, one mile in diameter, in the middle of the lava dome. The, uh, the men were up here on this side of the crater as right. they fell in. This is a between 45 and 70 degree slope. Literally, you could not drive a car right. up there. Right. To walk in here, people say, how come you just don't go hike to him? Right. It's a 14 to 16. 16-hour hike just to get to him, right. and then if he's not able to walk, what, what, what good what is that? Yeah. Now you have a hiker in there 14 to 16 hours right. of hiking to get in there. Uh, something else, we were listening to the, the, the sheriff there of the county talking in, in a press conference. He said that uh, it's a 70-degree slope where they think he is, but it is not snow-covered. One of the problems is he took his coat off right. for the picture. When you take, uh, so and he didn't have a jacket on, didn't have a pack on, um, and whether they thought that he could actually hear that whistle or not, they weren't sure. They said right. the winds were howling, the, air, the aircraft were in the air. Uh, air you know, they don't know whether that was just wind whistling through something or was he actually trying to signal something. They will get him today because uh, this is what I just called up. There it is right there. Brand new shot. This is actually from the visitor center. Right. And <laughs> literally an hour ago, all of the clouds just just basically okay. clear. You couldn't see anything except cloud cover. Now you can see the edge line, the ridge line here, and you can even see the lava dome right here. Uh, he's somewhere back in this area right there, and the helicopters will get to him today. All right. Uh, the update is we're finally getting some good weather, Allie. Uh, this is about as, as good as it's been all day long. You know, I've been in this mountain for four or five hours, and until about a half an hour ago, I could see very, very little of the mountain because of that heavy, heavy fog, which has been hampering the rescue efforts. I talked to the undersheriff uh, in the county that, that's uh, organizing this rescue mission last night and this morning, and they were very frustrated that they were not able to get up here sooner. But it's just a question of putting rescuers' lives at risk because uh, even though they got within about 500 feet uh, of Mr. Bullig uh, yesterday afternoon, they were not able to rescue him uh, based on, on where he fell. Well, uh, he's, he's not at the bottom of the crater. He's about 500 feet up from the bottom of the crater. So just too dangerous uh, yesterday to rescue him. Still too dangerous this morning. Uh, the sun is peaking out, though, and uh, the winds have died down. So they're hoping uh, this afternoon those Navy choppers will be able to get in there, and they might be able to get somebody to him and, and find out if he was able to uh, survive the night. Yesterday afternoon, they, they heard uh, some whistling uh, that he, he, they believe, uh, rescuers believe that he may have had a small whistle, which a lot of experienced climbers know to carry in case you need to single somebody. So uh, um, they believe that as of yesterday afternoon that he was alive, but an incredible fall. Uh, he, he, they believe he fell all in all about 1,500 feet, uh, but they're hopeful that he survived. And we just heard from uh, a CNN affiliate, KGW, that uh, they interviewed uh, the, uh, Mr. Bullock's climbing partner who said he threw a, uh, a sack uh, of supplies down after him because th this climber, he had taken off his own backpack to pose for a picture. And he was still about five feet away. He knew the dangers of being on this crater. And he apparently thought he was uh, far enough away that he was safe. He wasn't. It collapsed wow. underneath him. But his, uh, his climbing partner had the wherewithal to throw down that sack of supplies. So hopefully that got to him. We don't know. Right. Uh, we, we just don't know uh, if, if he survived the night, what his condition is, how badly he was hurt in this really tremendous fall.